Hello, Anikodia. Now, don't adjust your set. It's just a little bit dark, and that's because I haven't shown you how to set up the simplest yet most important circuit in Rust. So this is another viewer requested video, and it's simply to strip out all of the bull and go right back to basics. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the components you're going to need, how to set everything up, the idea of this video is to give you an understanding of the most basic circuit. Once you understand the four fundamentals of a circuit, the world's your oyster and you can go wild with these builds. If you're wondering what the four fundamentals are, you've got power production, power storage, power usage and power control. So let's start with a basic ceiling light. The best chance of finding these is to run along the road until you find these crates. Or if you're a diver, you can look through the sunken chest too. If you're really having no luck finding these, then you can buy them from the bandit camp for 30 scrap. This is quite expensive, but what else are you going to use that scrap for? You can also learn and craft these with a level 1 workbench. So, you've got the ceiling light. Remember with these, you can't put them on the floor or the walls. They're called a ceiling light for a reason. Duh. When you've plonked it down, you'll notice that they've got 300 health, which is actually pretty strong. And they've got a power in. That power obviously goes into to power them. And a pass-through. The pass-through is where you can direct any unused power out of your light and into other electrical devices. For example, if you've got 10 power going into your light, the light will use 2. So you'll have 8 power left over coming through your pass-through. Pretty simple, eh? Speaking of power, we need power going into the light to get it to work. The best and only real way to do this is by using batteries. Batteries come in three variants. The first one is the small battery, which gives 10 power, 20 RWM for charge and 150 RWM for capacity. RWM stands for Rust Watt Minutes. It is a made up thing just for this game. We're not going to get too caught up in it because this is purely a beginner guide. If you do want me to make a more in-depth guide for batteries, let me know in the comments down below. On a basic level, the charge is what goes down when you draw in power, and the capacity is the total amount of charge the battery can hold. Again, it is a little bit more complicated than that, but let's move on. If you want to upgrade to the medium battery, these give 50 power, which means you can power 25 lights if you want to. These have a 100 RWM charge and 9000 RWM of capacity. Finally, the large battery. These things can power a small city and if you need more than one of these, then you're living in a Zerg base. They've got 100 units of power, 200 Rust Watt minutes of charge and a massive 24,000 Rust Watt minutes of capacity. All batteries have a power in and a power out. The power out will obviously go into the thing you want to give power and the power in will usually be a way of charging the battery up. We are going to cover this very soon. You can buy batteries if you can't find them. Again, from a few different places using scrap if you're not lucky enough to bump into them on your everyday travels. So now it's starting to get dark, let's wire up the ceiling light so we can see what we're doing. For this, you'll need a wire tool. You can craft these quickly and cheaply from the get-go, stood in front of a level 1 workbench, and all you need is two high qual. These last forever. They don't break, they don't expire. You can use them to wire things up through walls and ceilings. The only limitation is as long as you don't go over the maximum length in any one given connection, you can use it as many times as you like. You can also change the colour of the wire by pressing the R key, but that's for a different video. Simply make sure the wire tool is in your hand, connect one end to the power out of the battery, connect the wire along the wall to keep it neat. You don't have to do this, but if you've got a little bit of OCD like me, then you'll do it. The other end will simply go into the power in of the light. There you go, simples. The only issue with this is the battery will continue to draw current 24-7 until it completely runs out of charge or you disconnect the cable. So we need a way of controlling the power because we don't need power through the day. To do this we can use a simple switch. 
there's lots of variations to the switches and if you want to know what they all do watch my video in the cards now just remember to come back to this one for this video all we're going to do is use a simple switch now you can get these from chess or craft them with 100 metal everything i'm showing you is relatively easy to find and again if you don't have any luck finding it you can just go out and buy it place the switch on the wall or wherever you want it and you can see it's just as simple as turning it off and turning it back on put the power from your battery out into the bottom of the switch and the power out from the top of the switch goes into the light or whatever you want to power then the battery will only drain when the light switch is turned on just remember these switches use one power too so this total setup is currently using three power one for the switch and two for the light so now it's quiz time if this battery outputs 10 power how much power have we got going through the pass through on the light i'll wait right if you said seven then you're right and you're learning so well done now your beady eyed pros out there will see another problem with this circuit and that's the fact that when the light is turned on the timer is still running down on the battery this means we need to put power into the battery to charge it up the two most common ways are with solar panels and the wind turbines there is other ways to charge up as well for example the generator but we're just going to stick to the two most common ones i've done some in-depth tutorials on both of these topics and they are in the cards now one after another just remember to come back to this video and the best place for these by far are out of the way where cheeky little nakeds can't come along with the spears and start destroying them. Usually people put these on the roof which is fine. The solar panel has a single power out and you've guessed it, this goes into your power in of your battery. This will charge it up throughout the day when the sun is out. Obviously at night time your battery will stop charging. Now you can see here that when we turn the switch on the light is powered but even with the battery using power it's still charging faster and the timer is going up. Now the wind turbine is absolutely huge and it draws a completely unpredictable amount of power depending on the height it's placed and well basically just how windy it is. These will draw attention to you from miles around and they are pretty expensive too, so chances are you'll just stick to the panels. So that's it, you've got the four fundamentals covered. All good circuits need to have these, so remember them when you're playing around and building your own circuits. We use solar panels as a power production device, a battery as a power storage, we used a light as a power usage, and to control it we used a switch. This is literally as basic as you can get and I'd recommend wiring this up and changing components out as and when you want to upgrade to practice the electrics in Rust. Just remember when you're swapping components out, try and keep them to the same fundamental type and generally you won't go far wrong. Once you've mastered this you can start working on much more complicated circuits in Rust. On the screen now is the legendary patrons. If you want to be a patron yourself, check down in the description below for a link. You can follow me on social media to see what I'm up to. If you have watched it this far, let me know you're a legend in the comments down below and I'll drop you an anacod heart. If you do want to see any specific videos, let me know in the comments and I will certainly do my best. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.